research proposal and research report. When you study bachelor's, master's or above, you will have a subject for this. They call it uh, research methods or advanced research methods or dissertation or otherwise thesis and so on. They have different names, but whatever the subject is one. Now, if you take example, a bachelor's degree will have five subjects uh, and this research method subject. For those five subjects, you will get the uh, assignment questions at the end of the subject for assessment. They give you the exam paper or assignment brief that has the question that you have to answer. But for this subject, we don't give you any question. You have to make your own question. So you make your question and you tell your supervisor to your lecturer, this is the question I'm going to answer for this subject. This is what you're proposing. So you propose a question, this is the question I'm proposing and I'm going to answer this question and the supervisor has to approve that. The reason is when you bring the question on your own to answer for this subject, the supervisor has to make sure that is in line with the subject requirement. You can't have a question that is not connected to the subject. And you can't have a question that is too small for the subject. You can't have a question that is too big for the subject. So supervisor has to make sure that is within the requirement of the subject. That is why you give a proposal and the supervisor uh, approves it. After that, you can continue uh, writing your report. Research proposal will always be in future form because in the research methodology that clearly says the philosophy will be this, the strategy will be that the uh, sample collection will be this, the sampling uh, population will be that, the number of sampling is this, this is how the reliability, validity, uh, the ethics, all those things will be maintained. So they use this kind of future language. But in the report, you have to say, this research has used this kind of philosophy, this kind of uh, strategy, uh, this time horizon, this number of sample and so on. So that will be in the past language. When the proposal is approved by the supervisor, do I exactly have to follow what I proposed? The answer is logically yes, because you propose to someone to marry and you never marry someone else. But you always have some practical issues. When you propose a roadmap to a destination, you may have some hurdles and turbulences on the way. So you may have to do some minor alteration on the roadmap to reach your destination. But when your destination changes, you have to write a new route map. In other words, when your topic totally changes, you have to write a new proposal. Again, that is based on the supervisor's decision. You have to consult him. Research conceptualization in the proposal is depending on the preliminary literature. So when you do further literature review, your conceptualization may change. So this is okay to deviate from what you propose to a different conceptual framework. And your sample population, sample number, your, your uh, indicators, your operationalization, what you propose in your proposal may change based on the circumstances. That is possible. And again, you have to consult your uh, research supervisor. Research proposal will contain three sections in it uh, for universities, but there may be deviations on this based on the university's requirement, but basically three sections. Section number one will be the introduction part where you will have the research introduction, you will have the uh, research uh, background, research problem, research hypothesis, research objectives and the research question. Uh, finally, you may have the research significance and after that the section number two, it will be the literature review. So you'll have the preliminary basic literature review uh, with the conceptualization and the section number three will be the research methodology you are proposing to conduct this research. And uh, after that, you'll have the reference list of this. And you may have the operationalization also. So you may have the uh, proposed uh, questionnaire to collect the data as well in the proposal. In the final research report, or we call this dissertation or thesis, you will have five chapters, basically. Some universities may segregate this into seven chapters, but altogether, every uh, content is the same. So chapter number one is about the introduction, research background, research problem. Uh, research hypothesis, research objectives, research questions, and uh, maybe finally the significance of research or some other different things as well on top of this. So, uh, the chapter number two will be the literature review, final review of your literature and the conceptualization, uh, uh, conception framework in fact. And the chapter number three will be the research methodology that you have used. So all these will be in the past language because you have already done that. And section number four, in fact, the chapter number four will be 
the data collection, data analysis and the findings and chapter number five will be the conclusion and the recommendation. After this, you may have some additional uh, information. It may be your reference list, it should be a reference list and your data collection instrument, that is your, your questionnaire and some other information that you want to add to this as appendices. So this is the, the structure of your report. But anyway, consult your supervisor. They may want this to be in a different segregation and different structure as well. But this is the basic of any university.